So uh, power is contained within it. So first of all, um, welcome to the show. I know that you're quite busy as the MHA for Virginia Waters. This being the first week the House is back, or the second actually. Is it the second or the first? It it's, is, the second, it's, it's the second week. It's the second week, week right, because it's only Tuesday. I keep thinking it's Friday for some reason. It's a little too much on my brain right now, I think, and thanks for the clarification. Uh, so you're, this is your second session uh, sitting as an MHA. Is it, is it as much fun as the first? Well, I don't, I don't know if fun is the word that I'd use to describe it. I mean, the, the topics that we get to talk about and debate in, this, in the House of Assembly certainly are very serious ones. And, you know, in my capacity as the opposition MHA responsible for the status of women, um, you know, today is a really sobering day. It's the International Day for the Elimination, elimination of Violence Against Women. And, you know, it, it, violence against women continues to be a problem in, in Newfoundland and Labrador. And while, you know, first and foremost, I want to thank those um, many volunteers and, you know, community people who are working on the front lines to support uh, first and foremost per violence prevention, but also yes. support uh, individuals who have experienced violence. We still have a ways to go. And, uh, you know, the last, num since the House has opened, we've been asking questions about the Family Violence Intervention Court. And uh, today we actually uh, spoke about a number of places where government um, has, you know, in, in my opinion, made some decisions from a, a financial perspective where had they done their job better, they would have had the money to keep the court in place. And I think, you know, for me, you know, we asked, am I having fun? Um, I, it's, it's really important work that we're doing to try to get government to, to reprioritize where it puts its attention and effort. And I think when we're talking about, you know, issues that, um, you know, one in two women in Canada over the age of 16 have experienced physical or sexual violence, um, then, then we, need to, we need to make sure that we're doing everything we can, especially with programs that were working like the Family Violence Intervention Court. Yes, it was. Uh, it was working. It, it seemed to have been proven. I had a few conversations with Lynn Moore, and she says that the, it was quite effective, and rather draconian of the progressive conservative government to to cut this, particularly when these statistics are as high as you you are stating. Uh, that well, uh, there are more. I mean, one is too many, Kathy. You know that. Uh, anyone who is a victim of sexual violence, uh, regardless of uh, of gender, but f you know, frankly, this is a, a women's issue right now. And but. but it is both, I think. It's an issue for all human beings, and we have to uh, arrive at a solution. And the Purple Ribbon campaign's been going on since 1989. Mm -hmm. It's 2014. Years. And, you know, we also have, I mean, the, as you would be aware, and I'm sure your listening audience is aware, um, you know, government commissioned a few years ago a report in 2011 on sexual exploitation. Mm -hmm. And, you know, th those people that are on the front lines who are working in the area of sexual exploitation, which is, you know, uh, something that I don't think any of us in the community want to be talking about. And none of us want to be thinking that that's actually happening in our, in our, in our, in our beautiful province. But the reality is that it is. And when frontline workers are asking for this report to be released, and government um, is, you know, saying that they're not releasing the report because they're protecting people. Well, in other jurisdictions, you know, information around sexual exploitation is released so that frontline workers can look at con a continuous improvement process to help support these young and, and vulnerable, you know, individuals in, in, in our community. And I just think if you're serious about, um, you know, public safety, um, we had to make sure that we're putting our time and effort into what's important and where the priorities are. And then from a, you know, from a fiscal perspective, you know, we asked questions today in the House you know, about the skyrocketing expenses related to the Confederation building renovations. Sure. You know, so for me, as a woman, as a mom, you know, when I, when I have so many people who've passionately lobbied to me about the Family uh, Violence Intervention Court, which was a half million dollars, a dollar per person in Newfoundland and Labrador, yet Peanuts. You know, we, we've got um, tens of millions of dollars being overspent in renovating Confederation building. Or here's a really simple uh, example. There's a school scheduled to be demolished in St. Anthony to be replaced with a green field that hasn't been done yet, and we're spending $100,000 a year just to keep insurance on the building because we haven't gotten it demolished yet. Uh, the, yeah, the, the amount of buildings that are not being used, the infrastructure that's being uh, uh, just, uh, I don't know. I, I find it sickening that there are so many... Uh, buildings that we're paying to get heated just the example of, i mean you know just the bloody airport in gander uh, kathy there's so much money that that could be 
put towards better uses, uh, whether it's on a municipal or on the provincial level. Makes me sick. Uh, what are you folks going to do differently if you get elected? Well, I think, you know, we've talked about whether we can look at a coordinated effort, an asset management group, asset management team that will kind of, you know, pull all of those building uh, properties that are owned by government into one area so that you can manage them more quickly, more efficiently, and make the decisions faster mm -hmm. so that you're not spending hundreds of thousand dollars on vacant buildings, yeah. heating them, or with insurance that you're getting the job done. And it's a really, I mean, the Premier challenged me in the House of Assembly saying that how callous of it was, was it of me to, to bring up fiscal responsibility at the same time we're talking about saving women's lives. And I would say to him that we need that money. We need to save that money because it's about the priorities that people want their taxpayers' money spent on. I don't think any taxpayers, certainly none of your listening audience, would want money wasted when we can turn that money into programs that would allow, like, you know, a woman tonight to have some solace and some comfort. Yep. And I think that's what we have to do. I it's think you're right. Priorities. Yep. It, it, I, listen, no disagreement from me. We have to leave it for, at here, uh, Kathy. You. Stay tuned, though. Connie Pike uh, from the Coalition Against Violence will be coming up next. I'm sure she will have some comments about what you had to say. Thank you for your time Thank you today. For my call. Speak to you soon. Bye-bye.